Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about all the books I read in May, there are 11 of them and there is quite a wide range here both in terms of the subject matter of the books and my enjoyment as well. So first off let's quickly get these six books out of the way, I'm not showing those very well, these six books which are the Women's Prize shortlisted books. I have read the entire shortlist and reviewed it for Toast magazine. I'm just going to briefly give you my thoughts here and then if you want to know more thoughts you can go and read the article which I'll link in the description box down below. The first book I read on this year's shortlist was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyekin Braithwaite which is about a woman called Keredi who works in a hospital in Nigeria and her sister Ayula is a serial killer. She kills her boyfriends and Keredi has been emotionally blackmailed into helping her sister clean up after these rather violent incidents. This book is fun, it's sharp, it's funny in places but at the same time I don't, I mean I'm looking at the quotes on the back of this book. The Guardian called it a literary sensation. The New York Times called it a bombshell of a book, sharp, explosive, hilarious. I just, I didn't get it on that level. I, I for me, I thought this book was, as I said, fun, it's definitely really accessible, it's fast paced, you can get through it so quickly, but I found it quite surface level in places and there were many points where I wish she delved into something in more detail. So for instance Ayula has a really strong love for social media and the way she projects herself to the world and there was so much discussion to be had between performative self and private self and how she maintains these two things. This person who kills people and then this person who pretends she doesn't kill people and I really wanted to see more of that and there was definitely um, definitely more room for discussion between that mirroring of Kerry working in a hospital and saving people's lives and Ayula, you know, killing people. Some of that imagery was there, I just, I just wanted more from it. As I said, I found it quite surface level in places. Still fun though, definitely fun. Ordinary People by Diana Evans was the next book that I went to. This is about two couples in London, their love lives are falling apart. For me, this comes down to a matter of personal taste when it comes to writing style. It's not what I particularly love in a book, but I know that some people absolutely love it. Loads of people absolutely love it, in fact. I would recommend this for fans of If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor. And I say that because you come to know these characters so well, you know everything about them, their memories, everything that they're wearing, what they're eating, their, their every single movement. And I found that personally, it just to be too much. It reflects the mundanity of life. It reflects what it's like to know everything about someone. Like, where do you go from there if you already know everything about somebody else? What do you have to talk about anymore? Um, so I totally get why it's written in the way that it is written. Um, I've heard people call that romantic in a way, and I can also see that, but it wasn't personally one of my favorites from the list. Then we have Milkman by Anna Burns, and I'm still not sure what I think of this book. Um, you may tell that this year's shortlist for me has been more hit and miss than previous shortlist. I've always, you know, never fallen in love with all of the books, but I think with this, it's more polarized for me. This one sits in the middle. I'm still not sure how I feel about the writing style. There were some points when I was reading this and I thought this is brilliant. There were some points when I was reading this thinking, oh my goodness, life is too short. Um, it's rambling and our main character, the narrator, she is burying her head in 19th century novels to get away from the 20th century and the troubles in Ireland because she doesn't want to be part of her present. Likewise, we as a reader are burying our heads in her 20th century novel to get out of our 21st century. So I liked that layering and um, it's very stream of consciousness. If you liked Girls of Half Form Thing by Emma McBride, then I think you could really gel with this writing style. As I said, I'm still reflecting on it, still not sure, but I do admire it and I'm very intrigued by it. Next up on the shortlist, I read The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is a retelling of the Iliad from the point of view of Bryces, who's been captured by Achilles and is being constantly sexually assaulted by him. She gets to be our chronicler in a way that women don't get to be a chronicler in these times. I think this is very well written. I have enjoyed Pat Barker's books in the past. The thing that frustrated me and tarred this whole book for me though is the fact that as I see it, this book is about giving that voice to Bryces. She says at one point, I cannot separate myself from Achilles narrative, I am tied to it. And this is about her going forth and finding her own story. 
but I didn't feel like I got to know her at all. She tells us about the awful things that are happening to her and the people around her, but I didn't feel like I got to understand her wants, her needs, her past, her memories, what she wanted from her future, nothing. And part of that, I think, is because of the distance that's created between herself and her narrative through trauma. But I don't think that if that's the point, that was explored enough. And I felt by the end of this book, I knew more about Achilles and that just seems to defeat the entire point. So yeah. There are parts of this book that I think are great, but I just question the way it delivered its overall message. Then I read Cersei by Madeleine Miller, which I think is absolutely masterful. I could completely believe that Cersei was narrating this story. It's like seeing the birth of, of an omniscient narrator. She's definitely godlike. She's to be feared, but also pitied. She's timeless. This, I think, would be a safe bet for betting on who is going to win this year's prize because it's... It, you just feel relaxed. You know that you're in safe hands when you're reading this book because you trust Madeline Miller. She paces it so well. It's brilliant. It's about Circe. I don't think I said that. Another Greek myth retelling. Um, so I really enjoyed that one. But my favourite from this year's list is An American Marriage by Chiara Jones. This is about Celestial and Roy and their relationship. Roy is arrested, being accused wrongly of raping a woman. He's sent to jail. It mirrors James Baldwin's 1974 novel, If Beale Street Could Talk, but the characters in this book make different decisions than the characters in James Baldwin's book, while keeping the premise and the framework of the story the same to show how little has changed in the racist society that we live in, especially the justice system. Justice system, I'm gonna use air quotes there. I thought this book was intentionally messy and heartbreaking and raw and wonderful. It's part um, prose and then part epistolary. I really enjoyed it. So, I don't know who's gonna win out of these two, but I really hope it's one of these guys. But we will wait and see. I will link my review down below that I wrote for Toast Magazine, summing up my thoughts on the six books. Everyone who comments will be put into a giveaway to win a copy of next month's book club book. Also next Wednesday, which is Wednesday the 5th of June is the evening of the prize ceremony. I'll be there, so I'll be on Instagram talking about that. And then later that evening at midnight, I'll be on BBC Radio 5 Live um, talking about all of the shortlisted books and talking about the winner. So if you want to tune into that, do. You can listen to it on the radio, stream it online. It'll also be on the BBC Sounds podcast app place afterwards if you're not up at midnight, which I normally aren't. I think I'm going to have to have a disco nap between the women's prize and doing the radio show, otherwise I will not be speaking coherently at all. All right, so we have a few other books and I'm gonna whiz through these because apart from one of them, there's only one that I really loved and the other ones I just, you know when you read a book and it's okay and it's not that negative and it's not that brilliant and therefore you don't have heaps and heaps to say about it. That's how I feel about these books. So let's just, let's just go through them and talk about them quickly. This one I really didn't gel with at all. So I DNF this book. This is Tentacle by Rita Indiana. It's published by And Other Stories. This book was just a question of there are so many things going on and I just didn't see myself falling in love with it. And as I said before, life is too short. I'd also just finished reading all of the Somerset Maugham books I needed to read for judging. I'd also just finished reading all of the Women's Prize shortlist. So I was eager to pick up books I really wanted to get to. This was one I really wanted to get to, but after the first 30 pages, and it's a very short book, it's under 200 pages. Yeah, I just thought, no. This is about LGBTQ plus topics, which is why I picked it up. It's about climate change and time travel. It's set in a dystopian world there is everything going on in this tiny little book and I just found it chaotic and not in a great way so it was not for me I was also buddy reading it with the two Laurens and Jean none of whom were really loving it either so it wasn't as if they'd finished it and gone you must stick with it because it gets brilliant yeah I'm putting it down maybe I'll pick it up again at another point but I'm not really sure then I read The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh this is about a family who live on an island. We don't really know what's happened to the rest of the world. It gave me vibes of um, The Village. It also reminded me a lot of Margaret Atwood, especially Oryx and Crake. It has that dystopian post-apocalyptic feel to it, um, where women are 
blamed really for all the terrible things that go on in the world and in most cultures around the world there is some kind of myth that blames women for death. That's something that I explored in my short story at Libby's Coffin Hotel in the beginning of the world in the middle of the night. So I do find that kind of folklore and mythology fascinating. It's also linked with um, Victorian ideas about hysteria and water cures and the links between women and water and witchcraft. So it has all of the ingredients of a book that I would really love, um, but it is so, so very depressing. And I wanted more hope. That may be besides the point of the book, but it was just the spiraling effect of what women have been taught to internalize and inflict on each other. Maybe it's just a bit too, bit too much because it is a very good reflection and obviously a hyperbolized version of what goes on in our world today. But because of that, and because I, I feel at the moment in, in many areas of the world, we are going backwards when we're talking about women's bodies and ownership of women's bodies that this was, um, Maybe it hit too much of a nerve, so in the sense that makes it good, but I, as I said, wanted a bit more hope. Next, I read Ponty by Charlene Teo, which is one I've been meaning to get to for ages. It's set across three different time periods. The first one is about a woman who's been recruited to be in this um, budget horror show, Ponty, which then gets a bit of a cult following. Then we follow her daughter, who is trying to scare people at school by talking about her mother and how she's been in this horrible film and she can do all of these things, but she's overcompensating because her mother is severely depressed at home and doesn't get out of bed and has become almost like a monster to her. And then in the future, we see the point of view of the young girl's best friend when she's older, who is doing the publicity for a remake of the film of Ponty. I really did feel for the young girl Sue and her mother as well, Amisa, and it was really interesting that also her best friend is called Cersei, and that tied in with ideas of witchcraft and linking in with reading um, Cersei by Madeleine Miller. I think the imagery there is really quite strong. The book overall, despite being very well written, I felt I was always waiting for something to happen, and it kept on reaching for that something, and then it never really got there. Um, and again, maybe that is the point in that we're always waiting for something to happen, for the next big break to happen, which is definitely what Amisa is waiting for because she thinks that something amazing is going to happen to her career and she's done all these things, she's done these films, but then she just finds out that no one wants to hire her anymore. And I think that is the point of this book, is that we're waiting for that big plot twist in our lives and often we just never get there. I question whether that itself makes a book good, um, but I do see the point that the author was making. I then read this non-fiction book which is called The Death of the Gods by Carl Miller, the new global power grab. This is one of those non-fiction books that I felt tried to do way too many things in a short period of time, and then ultimately you just never feel like you get to the crux of anything. It is a discussion on power and the internet and hackers. I particularly found the internet and hacking bit really fascinating. I didn't realise you could hack a computer using the light sensors, almost like a, well not almost, definitely in a Morse code kind of way. So I did learn some fascinating things from this book, but I didn't think it was that well written, I have to say. So not one I would particularly recommend. However, let's end on a high. This is Doreen by Barbara Noble. I picked it up a couple of days ago. This is a Persephone book. I love Persephone. They are cosy reads, uh, reissued editions of classics that have been forgotten. This is about a young girl called Doreen who was evacuated during the Second World War. Her mum really doesn't want to get her out of London because she's going to miss her, but she ends up going and she falls in love with the family that she is sent to. It's about class, it is about what family means, it's about where we belong and our responsibilities to our parents. And I felt the same way about this book that I think I felt reading Carrie's War when I was 11 by Nina Borden. It, I thought, was just absolutely charming. Is it the best book I've ever read? No. Was it exactly what I needed at that moment in time? Yes, plus there was a plot twist somewhere between the middle and the end that I just didn't see coming and I couldn't put this book down and I stayed up late to read it and that hasn't happened for a while apart from out of obligation that I need to finish a book for work. So I really, yeah, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for this book. So as I said, that lots of mixed reactions to books this month. Let me know if you have read 
any of these. As I said, I'll link my toast review down below if you'd like to listen to BBC Radio 5 Live next Wednesday at midnight. That would be lovely. Let's have a chat in the comments section down below. Let me know what you have been reading, what you've been up to. I hope that you have a great week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love.